In our first tape, Basic Fly Casting, you discovered that to become a top-notch fly fisherman, you must learn to control the cast. And the key to controlling the cast is educating your wrist. Now, fly fishing instructor and author, Doug Swisher, will show you how to apply the techniques you learned in basic fly casting so that you can make the transition from being just a caster to a real fly fisherman. Hi, I'm Doug Swisher. In this tape, I'll quickly review what you learned in basic fly casting. The straight line concept, loop control, the basic stroke, and beginning stream cast. Then I'll build upon these basics and go on to the more advanced techniques for fishing the clock. This is what I mean by fishing the clock. Picture yourself in a large pool with a heavy hatch going on. Fish are feeding in every direction. If you move around, you'll spook the fish. So you must be able to cast effectively at every angle. On our clock, 12 o'clock is straight upstream and six o'clock is straight downstream. So that you can fish the clock effectively, I'll first teach you how to improve the basic straight line and slack line cast you've already learned. Then we'll get into the real exciting stuff, the real nitty gritty cast and techniques that will turn you into a super fly fisherman. I'll teach you what I think are the two most important casts of all, the reach cast and the curve cast. And then I'll show you how to get incredibly long floats by combining the two. I'll show you the roll cast, roll pickup, and the line manipulation techniques of stripping, mending, and feeding. And then I'll teach you how to piggyback these individual techniques together in various combinations so that you can effectively fish from any position on the stream. I'll also show you how to do specialty cast and how to really increase your distance with a double haul. If you haven't seen our first tape on basic fly casting, but feel you're ready for this one, that's fine, come on and join me. If you're confused or feel you're not quite ready, I recommend you go back and study it first. Now, I'll quickly review some of the highlights of basic fly casting. Doug Swisher will be casting right-handed in this tape. Left-handed casters should adapt by learning the concepts and then applying the techniques to their situation. In basic casting, you learn to be a line watcher. If you can recognize your mistakes, you can make corrections. The yarn rod is a great visual aid and an excellent training tool. The most important casting basic is the straight line concept. By now, you've learned to make your rod tip travel in a straight line so that the energy of the cast flows straight to the target. The microsecond wrist is a physical skill you must develop. The loop is the path of the fly line as it rolls out on the front cast and the back cast. The loop has three basic characteristics, size, shape, direction. You must learn to control these characteristics. The loop is controlled by the basic casting stroke. This is the basic physical movement for all casts. So be sure you master it before you go any farther. Learn to blend the relatively slow movement of the arm with a microsecond snap of the wrist. I then taught you how to apply the basic casting stroke and loop control to learn your first presentation cast, the straight line cast. Learn it well because it's the basic building block of all the other casts. To get more distance with less effort, I taught you how to shoot line. Then I taught you the control system which allows you to control the line on the water after the cast is made. Finally, I taught you the second presentation cast, the basic slack line cast, which gives you the ability to get drag-free floats across currents of varying speed. You should be able to make these two basic presentation casts one after another, like this. Throw straight line whenever you want it, and throw slack line whenever you want it. Now if you can't do this, go back to the first tape and practice until it becomes second nature. Now let's put it all together. I'm going to show you how to refine and piggyback various techniques so that you can fish the clock or every position on the stream. As you learn more of these techniques 
and how to combine them piggyback style, you'll continually increase your ability to get longer drag-free floats. The straight line cast is used for most wet fly situations and for fishing dry flies straight upstream or at 12 o'clock. At this point, your ability to throw nice straight line cast is probably a little lacking. If you remember in the first tape, I told you the key was aiming the cast low over the water. Well, that aim is really critical. You don't want to aim it higher than the horizon or it's going to fall back in your, in your face. It'll never lay down straight. And if you aim it a little bit too low, you're probably going to stub it. So there's an angle just over the water that you've really got to work on to make that cast lay out nice and straight. So work with that angle. It's very critical. The second thing that I want to tell you that will improve your straight line cast is don't change your technique between the false cast and the delivery cast. Most anglers make the mistake of false casting too high and then on the final delivery cast, they change your technique by dropping the rod tip out of a straight line. Remember, we want the flow of energy straight to the target and straight back. So get the technique going, even on your false cast, and all you got to do is let it go. The next point is after the loop forms and the line starts rolling to the target, then you drop your rod tip. It's kind of like the follow through of a baseball pitcher. That puts your rod down in the proper fishing position and lets the fly land softly so you have delicate presentation. And the final tip is the energy of the cast. If you throw too hard for the amount of line, it'll hit the end and bounce back. And of course, if you throw too easy, you'll kill it. And maybe one more little tip. Let the line slide through your hand just a little bit right at the last second and that will help that line stay out there straight. Let me do that one more time. This time I'll hang out of the line. There you go. Nice and straight. That softens the cast. Now, when you practice, practice it two ways. Without shooting line, like that, and then practice shooting. Also, same thing backhanded. You should be able to deliver straight line cast from the backside without shooting, and then add the shoot. So just to quickly review, aim is critical. Aim it below the horizon. Keep your technique proper. Don't false cast high. Get the energy right and a little shoot. And you should have a nice cast. It'll roll right out to that old brown trout. Work on your straight line cast. Now, let's see the straight line cast in slow motion. Aim low, keep your loop tight, and follow through with the rod tip. Use this cast to fish dry flies upstream and most wet flies at any angle. Stripping line is a method of removing slack that allows you to fish a tighter, more controlled system. As a fly fisherman, one of the biggest problems you'll encounter is slack line. Now, by slack line, I mean loose, crooked line laying all over the river. It's a real problem. Here's what I'm talking about. If you make a cast upstream and you don't put the line over your finger to collect the slack, and I see a lot of fishermen doing this, look what happened under the rod tip. All of this loose line is forming. You can't set a hook. It's very difficult to cast. Remember, back in our basics, you need a straight line to cast. So if you'll simply put the line over the finger, it can be two fingers, the middle finger. Most people use the index. Put the line over the finger and collect that slack line as it forms under your rod tip. Then you're in a position to set a hook, make a good cast, and you're under control. So learn to strip. Take the line in at the speed of the current. Now, there are two other forms of stripping. One is used for streamers, and the other one is simply pulling line off your reel. But for what we're talking about now, it's when you fish straight upstream with dry flies, you want to be able to put that line over the finger, strip it in at the speed of the current, keep your system nice and neat and tidy, and you'll be under control. And that's the name of the game, keeping yourself always under control when you're in the river. By combining the straight line cast with stripping, you have an effective method of fishing dry flies upstream, basically the upstream quadrant. 
or from 10.30 to 1.30 on the clock. With this technique and all the others that follow, you will automatically apply the control system. Line over the finger, lower the rod, and follow the drifting line. Mending is repositioning line on the water after the cast is made. It can be used to add slack for longer drag-free floats or to add tension for movement of the fly. The key to repositioning line after the cast is made is in the wrist. It's very similar to your basic casting stroke. Let me show you what I mean. If I want to throw the line up to the right, I use a little bit of arm, but the final power is that quick little movement of the wrist. Just learn to snap that wrist right and left and throw the line wherever you want it. You should be able to do it forehanded and backhanded. You should really work in your mending because as you get into more and more dry fly fishing, after that cast is made, you want to reposition the line, put it in a different position so you get a nice, long, drag-free float. Work on that quick wrist for mending. By combining the straight line cast with mending and stripping, you get longer floats and can fish from your body position upstream or from nine to three on the clock. Each of these casts and techniques I'm going to show you will build and piggyback in one another. And once you've mastered them, you'll have the ability to choose the right combination to get the longest natural drift possible. You'll be able to measure your success in yards of drag-free float. And that's the name of the game. The longer your fly floats drag-free, the greater your probability of catching a trout. Now that you know how to zip your line out on the water as straight as an arrow, and strip and mend, let me show you how to improve your slack line cast. The slack line cast is used to fish across currents of varying speeds. It allows your fly to float drag free for a longer period of time than a straight line cast. The principle behind this cast is to use more line than is necessary to reach the target and form it into a series of controlled wrinkles or serpentines. As the wrinkles are straightened by the currents, your fly drifts in a natural manner. The advanced slack line cast will give you the ability to handle those difficult situations. Those days when it's windy, those places where you want to tuck it underneath some overhanging obstruction under a tag alder, under a tree. Also, it'll allow you to fish every angle of the clock. In the basic slack line cast, you'll learn to throw a wide loop high and simply lower the rod and let the line puddle to the target. You threw high, you lowered the rod. Well, that's fine on a windless day and when you don't have a tough place to throw into, but when that wind's blowing, if you gotta tuck it near the bank, you have to go in with a lower loop, and here's the way you get your slack. You bring your line hand into play, and you throw the cast, you pull back, lower the rod, follow the drifting line. To learn this, practice pulling with your left hand on a few high casts, gradually lower the cast and tighten the loop, and pretty soon you're buzzing it right over the water. If your timing's good in the pullback, you'll get nice slack serpentines down the stream, and you'll get a great float. So work on your advanced slack line cast, and the key to that is that quick pull with the left wrist. But you get that down, and you can handle any difficult situation. Now there's one more slack line cast I'd like to show you. It's called the stutter cast. I use it for fishing across these tricky currents, especially heavy tongues of current that are coming off riffles like this. <clears throat> what I do is, as I shoot the line across the river, I wiggle my wrist in the horizontal movement only, not in at any angle, totally horizontal. While you're shooting the cast, wiggle the wrist, and it'll throw nice serpentines all the way across the river. Great cast for covering the far bank. Now, let me show you the cast in slow motion. While I'm coming forward, as soon as I start the power stroke, I start wiggling the wrist side to side and watch the wrinkles shoot across the currents to the far bank. 
Now, let's go to the practice field for a minute. Okay, here's a great exercise to improve your ability to throw slack line. Here's the way it works. Put a target out in front of you at about 20 feet and lay your line straight into it. What you're gonna do is reach back, add a couple of feet of line to your system, make a false cast, come back and try to hit the target. Next cast, add a couple of more feet, come back and try to hit the target. Keep adding more and more line and it becomes progressively harder to hit the target, but you'll learn how to throw a nice slack line. Great exercise for improving your ability to throw slack line. Now, let's look at the slack line cast in slow motion. Cast, pull back, and lower the rod. Use this cast to get natural floats at any angle of the clock. Combining the slack line cast with mending will give you even longer drag-free floats. You could stop here in your search for natural floats. Many anglers do. But stay with me for our next cast. It's the most important presentation cast of all. The slack line cast is an excellent presentation cast, but it has limitations. It has very limited control and accuracy. Also, slack is rather chancy. It's very difficult to precisely control the sine waves in the cast. There's usually a critical area where two currents meet. It's almost impossible to control the exact configuration of the line that curves over this area. If the leader falls this way, you get a good float. If the leader falls this way, you get drag immediately. Now I'm going to show you a cast that will blow your socks off. As far as I'm concerned, this is, without question, the deadliest weapon in my arsenal. It can be used in more difficult situations than any other cast. It's called the reach cast. The reach cast not only gives more control, but also gives longer, more predictable floats. Being a straight line cast, it can be cast with authority, even in windy situations. The reach cast can replace the slack line cast in most situations and will give you even longer downstream drifts. It's a lot more effective than mending and it allows you to fish the entire clock, every angle on the stream. Before I show you the cast, let me show you the rationale behind it. To learn it, start with a vertical loop, make that loop very wide with a slow wrist and have an extreme forward tilt. You want a vertical loop because you don't want to kick the fly right or left during the cast. You want a slow wrist or a wide loop because you need time to change direction during the cast. And you need to tilt yourself forward so you can get the fly in the water quicker. Here's the way it looks. Cast vertically with a wide loop. That means a slow wrist. Tilt forward. Now, we're going to change directions with a cast 90 degrees with even power. Now, we'll take it off in the other direction. Even power. You just sort of paint the line and you keep the thumb on top of the cork all the way through the cast. Don't twist your wrist. Now, here's the way it looks in a fishing situation. I'll throw over here towards the bank. We've got some bushes with a slow current and if I lay it in with an extreme reach, I'm in very dead water with a fly and I get a much longer float than if I'd use slack line. I will take it in even a little further. It just gives you a greater angle on that fish. Okay, now that I've shown you the basics of the cast, let me give you a couple of tips on how to really improve your reach cast. Number one, when you practice, continually learn to press the cast more and more down into the water. Press it. Then on a windy day, when you have to put it under obstructions, you've got the ability to put it where you want it. Press that cast through the whole stroke. Another learning aid, if you're still having trouble, is throw the line off to the side of where you really want it to end up and then drag it into the right position. You're doing two things, making a straight line cast and then dragging the fly into position. Now, start combining those two movements so that you're dragging the fly in the air 
and pretty soon you'll start dragging quick enough to put the fly where you want it. Eventually, you'll learn to throw this cast with a tight loop so you can stay low and put it under anything. Learn to drill it right in there. The final tip is to practice both forehanded and backhanded, and with shooting and without shooting. In other words, take a set amount of line and lay it down, and then learn to shoot it. Also, work on the other side so you can deliver the reach cast from any position on the string. Believe me, the time spent on working on your reach cast will pay big dividends. It's the most important presentation cast of all. Here are the reach cast in slow motion. Throw a wide loop and use even power as you change direction 90 degrees. Reach casts give you longer natural floats with greater control. The ability to throw both right and left reach casts will allow you to triple your drag-free floats. With this dynamite cast, it takes much longer for the line to tighten and drag your fly. By combining the reach cast with a slack line cast and mending, you'll get even longer floats. This method is deadly for fishing open water where there are no overhanging obstructions. Feeding is a method of increasing the amount of line, which allows you to greatly increase the distance your fly can drift downstream without drag setting in. It's critical to good downstream dry fly presentation. Earlier I taught you stripping, which is a critical technique to good upstream dry fly presentation. When you throw the dry fly upstream, obviously the current's coming towards you, so slack collects under your rod tip. You have to be able to take it in. So I taught you how to put the line over your finger and take in the slack. Now it's just as important to fish dry flies downstream, so you have to have a method of making that fly float naturally. So you have to learn to feed the line out. You make the cast, this is your basic fishing position. Release the line here and replace it with that and you form a loop. You pop the rod and the line goes out. Put in another loop, pop the rod and it goes out. This is what I call feeding and it's critical to good dry fly technique downstream. Here's the way it looks at proper speed. You make the cast, you have the line over the finger. Now you start feeding in your little loops Pop the rod, you do it smoothly. A lot of little ones are better than a few big ones. Be careful not to make the fly drag. Keep that system loose but neat and tidy and you can run that fly down a mile and get a good drag-free float. Work on your feeding technique. It's very critical to dry fly presentation. By combining the reach cast with feeding, you now have a method of getting incredibly long drag-free floats and can effectively fish the downstream portions of the clock from three to nine. Now I'm gonna show you a cast that'll put your fly even farther downstream from your line and leader system than the reach cast. It's called the curve cast. Curve cast will give you even longer drag-free floats and they are the preferred cast for many tough situations. They're also the most difficult to learn. Okay, now I'd like to show you how to curve cast. We'll start with a positive curve. For the right-handed caster, that's the curve that swings around to your left. We call it a positive curve because it's thrown with a tight, dynamic, positive loop. It gives you a lot of control, even in windy situations. Here's the setup for that positive curve. You're gonna cast a tight loop flat out, parallel to the water, keep it good and tight with a microsecond wrist, and at the last second you're going to stop the rod and the line will kick around. Now here's what it looks like, a nice tight loop, drive a straight line with your rod tip, make sure your loops are lined up. Now, stop the rod and the line will kick around. Let's do that again. Get your loops going nice and tight, stop the rod dead, and it'll kick around nicely. The mistake you might make when you try it is not stopping at the right point. If you go past the stopping point, it won't curve. So the key 
is not to change your technique between false cast and delivery cast. Another little trick that will really help you to get a lot of kick in your curve is to bring the left hand into play. Watch my left hand on this curve. At the last second, I give it a little pull and it really snaps around. So work on your positive curve. It's a really important cast. It'll help you in some very, very difficult situations. Now let's review the positive curve in slow motion. Cast in a flat sidearm plane with a tight loop and stop the rod quickly. With this cast, you get longer floats, and it's especially deadly when fishing the 9 o'clock position. Combining the curved cast with feeding gives an even longer float. Okay, now I'm going to show you the negative curve. This may be the most difficult presentation cast of all. You'll have a great deal of trouble throwing it in the wind and to make it precisely accurate, but you ought to practice it anyway. It's a super exercise for learning loop control. Let me show you what I mean. Remember on the positive curve, we threw a really tight loop and let the line kick around like this. For the negative curve, we're gonna throw a wide, lazy loop and do everything we can to kill it before it straightens. That's the concept. Now, here's some of the rules that apply. Number one, throw a wide, lazy loop sidearm. Make sure your front cast and back cast are lined up by a little more than a straight line. Elevate your back cast, and when you come forward, you tend to stub it, and it's almost impossible to get it to straighten out. Wide loop, elevate the back cast, come way back, Sweep it forward and you get a nice, wide, lazy loop. Super exercise for honing in your loop control. It'll improve your fishing and it'll really help your casting. Here's a cast that will really rack up the extra feet of float. It's called the reach curve. By adding the reach to both curves, you'll find you'll get even longer drag-free floats. These are the ultimate presentation cast and are used for super difficult situations, usually where there's a maximum velocity differential between two currents. By adding feeding to the reach curve, you get the longest floats of all in the most difficult places. Now, let's review the four really important casts that are the cornerstones of our clock system. Straight line, slack line, reach, and curve. And don't forget the techniques that we add to them to get increased control and float. Stripping, feeding, and mending. Now, let's try some of these techniques on the trout. Okay, we'll try the old 1030 position here. A little slack line. Use the pull back with the left hand. Throw high, pull back, the rod dip down. Keep that system neat and tidy. Go with the flow. Okay. Oh, getting a good float, but it's about to drag. Oh, let's try that guy again. Okay, this time we'll put a bit, a little bit of a right reach on him. Give us a little better angle. And keep that system tight. And if you do get a strike, just lift the arm. Okay, now we're going below. We've got to do the feeding routine. There's a nice, soft, subtle tape. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a rainbow. Rainbow. Boy, did he take that soft and nice. Tuck that little fly in. Okay. All right. Nice fish. Nice fish. Okay. Trying to get back to headquarters there. All right. And get his head up. Oh, I love that kind of a tape. Just soft. And just the way he's just taking that natural ahead of it. Oh, pretty red stripe. 
Thrashing bugger. Thrashing bugger. Okay. okay, now he's gonna wake up. He's pretty heavy face. Back to the middle of the room. Okay. Head up, head up, head up. Come on. Now, when you do get these fish close to hand, get your fingers on your left hand spread out and get under the belly if possible. Whoop, he's not ready yet. He's a little hot. Okay. Oh, he wants to go back. Take a deep dive. Wrong fish. Okay, now we got him water spoon a little bit. Okay. Now, if you get him above you, just a little bit, you need to take the pressure off of him. That's a better position. There we go. Ah, all right, right in the tip of the jaw. I love it. There we go. Not bad. Right, here we go. The roll cast allows you to make a front cast when you don't have room for a back cast. The roll cast is especially useful when you're fishing in tight situations like this, where you don't have much room to throw the line behind you. So let me show you how to throw a good roll cast. There's three important points to remember when you make a roll cast. The first is to draw your rod up slightly behind your head and can it away from your body a few degrees. The second is to wait till the loop drops behind your shoulder so that you have enough slack to make the roll. The third thing is to apply the basic casting stroke, a little bit of arm and a quick wrist. Now, here's the way it looks. Draw the rod up just behind your head, have it canted a little bit away from your body, wait till the line drops behind the shoulder and apply the basic stroke, which is arm, wrist. You should be able to do it from both sides, forehanded and backhanded. Slide the line towards you, hit it with a quick wrist. Arm, wrist. Most people throw a, a roll cast with too much arm. I see more fishermen doing this. They take the arm and slam the rod down, and there's no power in the cast. The rod doesn't load up. Believe me, it's in the quick wrist like that. Let me show you what it looks like fishing right here in this run. Okay, there's one problem with the roll cast and it has to do with change of direction. In other words, I was just fishing up here to the right and the current was coming down to my left. If I have made a roll cast and it comes down a ways and I want to go back to the right, I don't dare pick it up on the right side of my body or I'll tangle so I have to learn to pick it up from the other side. Let me show you what I mean. If I'm up to the right, and I try to make this roll back up further to the right, see, I'll tangle up. I can't survive that. Now, let's put it back where it was. So to make that pick up, bring it to your left shoulder, draw your thumb up, and drive it back out. If the current was reversed, you'd bring it to your right shoulder and go this way. So you want to learn to do the cast backhanded and forehanded and that'll keep you from getting tangled in these flowing situations where you've got the current going right to left or left to right. The roll pickup not only gives you a quick method of changing direction, but also allows easy pickups in difficult fast water situations. And now I'd like to show you the roll pickup. It gives you a great method for changing directions in a stream. Let me show you how to do it. After you've made a cast and you want to pick the line up, just start out with your roll procedure. Pick your rod up, let the loop form, drive it in the air, but this time, don't let it go back to the water. Keep it aerialized, do your false cast, and put it back down. Now, if I'm fishing from right to left across these currents, you want to pick up on the left side of your body, change in the midair and go back to the target. If you pick up on the right side, then you can go down to the left. So you want to learn to do this forehanded and backhanded. The roll pickup is also a great technique for fishing dry flies straight upstream, especially in fast water. Let me show you what I mean. If I make a cast up here straight upstream, and assuming I'm in very fast water, I'm going to very quickly get a lot of slack under my rod tip. And if I can't strip fast enough, all I do is use my roll pickup, pick up the rod, slam it out, back to target. Even with the fly well out in front of me, anytime I want to pick it up, 
I just slide the line towards me, use a quick wrist to snap it out, and go back to the target. An excellent technique for fishing dry flies straight upstream in fast water. Another reason for knowing how to do a good roll cast are those occasions when you hang your fly up in some obstruction like that log over here. You use the same technique except on a regular roll cast you can slide the fly towards you. Obviously when it's hung up you can't do that so to get the slack you need you have to induce it. You have to feed it into the system to form the roll you need to roll it out backwards. So let's see if we can roll that fly out. I'll get the extra line I need so I can form the roll, then I'll apply the basic stroke, and it comes right off. So anyway, that's a good little trick to know. It'll save you time in the stream, also save a bundle of flies for you, too. Let's review the roll cast and roll pickup. Lift the rod, wait for the loop to form, and apply the basic stroke. Use the roll cast where there's no room to make a back cast. Use the roll pickup for changing direction, especially in cross-stream situations. And also for fishing flies straight upstream in fast water. So far, I've shown you all of the individual skills that are necessary to fish every position on the clock. Now I'll demonstrate. I'll have to use every technique we've learned so far to fish this clock effectively because my relationship to the currents will change each time I change position. I'm going to cast to the eight most important positions on the clock. Starting with a straight upstream position or 12 o'clock and rotate clockwise all the way around and back to 12 o'clock. At each position, I'll show you the best combination of techniques to get drag-free floats. The key to fishing the 12 o'clock or upstream position is just basically straight line casting. The low profile cast, you roll it right out over the water, immediately put the line over the finger, and take in the slack as it collects. Stay low. Do a good job of stripping to keep that system neat and tidy. You're in good condition. Now, another tip, if you've got a big fish feeding up here above you, especially in shallow, clear water, don't lay that cast right over his back. Use your reach cast to lay the line out to the side so you don't spook him. Another tip is if you're fishing extremely fast water straight upstream, you're going to have a lot of slack build up very quickly. So use your roll pickup to get the line out, and then get right back up there with your straight line cast and use your stripping. Now let's go to the 130 position, or the quartering upstream position. There are three basic casts you can use to fish this angle of the clock. One, of course, is straight line. Zip it right out there, put the line over the finger, use your control system, drop the rod, follow the drifting line. You get a nice little float. If you want to increase that float even more, go to your slack line cast. Remember, throw it high, drop the rod, you get a nice series of serpentines out there, and while they're straightening, you get an even longer float. But probably for the best float of all at this position will be your reach cast, where you reach to the left, lay the line way upstream, put the line over your finger, lower the rod, follow the drifting line, take in any slack, keep that system nice and neat, and you get a much, much longer float. For any of these casts, <clears throat> when they start to drag, you can use your mending system. Use your quick wrist, throw a little line upstream. Just remember, your fly is going to move a little bit. It'll come towards you, but that's OK. It'll increase your float. But probably the best cast, the best combination here, would be the reach cast to the left, followed by the control system. Now let's go to the 3 o'clock position. This is a great position for me to demonstrate the importance of putting the line over your finger, lowering the rod, and following the drifting line, what we call the control system. 
If I throw a straight line cast across these currents and I don't use the control system, if I hold the rod stationary like this, look how quickly the fly drags. Same cast, a fairly straight line cast to the same spot, but I lower the rod, I have the line over the finger, and I'm going with the flow, I get a nice float. So the control system is very important to all of these casts. Remember to use it. The straight line wouldn't be the best cast here. It's possible if you use a control system, but a better one might be the slack line. Throw high, drop the rod, use your control system. If you need even a longer float, throw higher, drop quicker, and you get more serpentines out there. And while they're straightening, you get a nice float. But probably the very best combination of all to get the best float at the 3 o'clock position is the reach to your left followed by the control system. I'd say that's the very best combination for the 3 o'clock position. Now, let's go to the 4.30 position. Up to this point, we've been basically fishing dry flies upstream. And the problem there is to collect the slack as they come down to you. Well, now we're going to encounter a different problem. We're going to fish downstream, and we have to give with a punch, so to speak. You have to learn to apply your feeding. If I make a straight line cast downstream and I don't feed line out, I get drag almost immediately. Now, you can improve that somewhat with slack line. Throw high, drop the rod, use your control system, and you get a pretty good float. But if you add the feeding to that system, look what happens. Slack line, control system, now start feeding, feeding. Pop that rod tip vertical with your quick wrist and you get a much longer float. You have to combine the feeding with your casting techniques when you fish downstream. Now the slack in feeding is an excellent technique, but reach cast in feeding is probably even better. You just get a better angle on that fish. You've got more line upstream. If you're fishing open water, you can add the slack line to the reach cast like this. You throw high, you get your angle, you pull back, and you have the reach upstream plus a bunch of curly cues. Now you feed on top of all of that, and you get an incredibly long drag-free float. When you have to maintain accuracy in tough situations, though, the very best combination is the reach cast coupled with feeding. That's the best one of all, to the 430 position. Now we'll go to the 6 o'clock position. This straight downstream position is where you really need to throw a lot of slack line. If you throw that cast straight at all, it'll immediately tighten up on your fly and it'll drag right now. So you have to induce a lot of slack. So you aim high with a wide loop, you drop the rod, and then you follow that up by bouncing the rod tip with your feeding motion. Now I'll show you one of my favorite techniques for getting slack in a downstream situation. I throw an exceptionally high loop. During the cast, I'm going to extend my hands and then pull them back to my hips. That leaves the rod tip pointed right down the target. You get good accuracy. Now you add the feeding system, and you get an incredibly long float. Now, one more point. If you have a fish feeding down below you and you don't want to line him, then combine your slack line with a bit of a reach to keep the line from going over his head. Then add your feed system to run that fly downstream and you won't spook the fish. So basically for this downstream fishing, you want to throw what I call maximum slack line and combine that with feeding. Now let's go to the 730 position. This is another one of those downstream positions where mending and feeding are the keys, especially the feeding. Now, you can add the feeding to any of these casts. You can add it to your slack line cast where you throw the loop high, drop the rod, then you bounce the rod tip. If you want to do a little mending, you just stroke the line up to the right. In this situation, get a longer float. You can add your feeding to the reach cast. If you remember, you start to the target, you drift the rod off 90 degrees to the side, then immediately add your feed, bounce the rod, put the line over the index finger, feed it out smoothly, don't move the fly. Now, you can actually combine the slack line with the reach cast like this. Aim your reach cast high as you're changing directions, pull back with the left hand, 
and you get a ton of slack. Then you add the feeding, and that system will go downstream with a nice long flow. Maybe the best technique to add with your cast is the curve. You can just use a curve without a reach and do the feeding, or probably for the ultimate drift of all, you can add the reach to the curve like this, and then bounce that old rod and run that line around the next bend in the river if you've got enough of it. That would probably be my favorite combination for getting a long drag-free float at the 730 position. Now let's go to the 9 o'clock position. This is a position where you're fishing directly across the current straight to the bank. If you use a straight line cast like this and add your control system, you get a little bit of drag-free float, but it doesn't take too long before the line tightens and drags the fly. So try adding your slack line like this, and it'll give you a better float because it takes time for the wrinkles to all straighten out. But still you'll notice that orange line is trying to get down there ahead of that fly and drag it. There it goes right now. So why not do a cast where you lay the line upstream and it'll take longer for the line to pass the fly. And that's what, of course, I call the reach cast. Put the line upstream, lower the rod, apply your control system, and the float goes much further. Even a longer float can be obtained by using the curve cast. Cast sidearm with a nice tight loop, stop the rod dead, and the fly will bounce around. It's well down ahead of the line. And that'll give you an even longer float than the reach. But I think the ultimate combination is combining the reach and the curve. Cast sidearm with a tight loop. During the cast, reach your arm way out to the side, and it hooks way around. And you can run that way down the river before drag will set in. And you've got the leader well above the fish, so you're not going to line him. It's just a great presentation angle. Now we'll go to the 1030 position. This is again where we quarter upstream. Let me show you some of the combinations that'll give you a good drag-free float in this position. Number one, just so a, a little bit of slack, use a control system. Remember now we're fishing upstream again, so we have to strip in the slack as it accumulates. I'm gonna show you a conventional pickup. I'm gonna throw more slack by aiming higher, dropping the rod quicker. This time when I make the pickup, I'm going to use the roll pickup, and you should practice this. Dynamite tool for changing directions and drying off your fly. Another slack line cast. This time I'll pick it up right away with a roll pickup, slam it out. This time I'll go in with a reach cast, put the line further upstream, line over the finger, apply the control system, take in the slack, keep that system neat and tidy. Conventional pickup this time with another reach. Pick it up even quicker. Now we'll go in with my favorite combo of all. That's where I hook the fly to the left and then apply stripping in the control system, like that. Now I've got a nice big bow upstream. The fly's over there by the bank. I keep that system really straight, and I'm in a great position for a strike or a pickup. Now we're back up to 12 o'clock. Why don't you practice fishing the clock? It's not easy, but learning these techniques will pay big dividends on the stream. Dividends like this. There's a spot. Wow, yeah, yeah. Feels so good. Whoa, the jumper. Come on, David. Hey! <laughs> jump, 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 jump. OK. Guess I better get some slack in here. Better get some slack. Mm. Love those jumps. Love those jumps. And the red stripes. Hang tight, hang tight. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right you go. Jump again. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Oh. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Cloudy day rainbow. It's rain and it's black line cast. 
Come on now. Come on now. Come on here. Come on now. That's it. Get tired. You're gonna get loose. You're gonna get loose. Well, it's a respectful rainbow. Very good. Get you next year and you'll be an old granddaddy. Very nice. Now you have the basic skills to fish drag-free floats at every angle. But in order to handle situations that are impossible to all but the best casters, you'll have to learn some specialty casts. These casts, like all the others, are based on loop control. You must learn the various wind casts so you can control your loop and put your fly where you want it even when the wind blows from the worst possible angle. Okay, now I'd like to show you the wind cast. And like all of the other casts, your knowledge of loop control will help you learn these casts. Now, let me take the four different directions the wind can come, front, back, right, and left. First of all, if the wind comes towards you, make your front cast low and tight under the horizon and make your back cast wide and high. Low and tight, wide and high. You've got to aim under the wind to get the line to straighten. If the wind comes from behind you, then you reverse it. Your back cast is going to be low and tight, your front cast wide. Low and tight, wide. Low and tight, wide. Let the wind work for you. You can throw a wide loop on your delivery. Now, when the wind comes from either side, let me show you what happens. I'm casting right-handed now. If the wind comes in on the left side, not a big problem. It's just windage. Just allow for it. If the wind comes in on the right side, let me show you four different casts that'll help you depending on the strength of the wind. For a light breeze, just stay low and tight and make sure your loops are lined up in a straight line and you can make a good cast. Stay under the wind. If you try to fight it by throwing into it, you'll throw a tailing loop like that and your fly will tangle and you'll never throw a straight line out front. So stay low and tight, straight loops. Now, when the wind gets a little stronger, try this cast. Make your back cast on the right side, but make your delivery cast on the left side. It may look difficult, but just learn to circle your head with a rod, come all the way around in the back cast, and then drive it straight ahead on the front cast. Don't go halfway and then have to come the other half. You can't drive a straight line. On the back cast, go all the way around, and then you can drive it straight and true. If the wind gets stronger yet, and you can't even survive the back cast on your right side, put your casting system over on the left side, and that's where your backhanded casting will pay a million dividends. Very easy to cast that way with a little practice. If you have to make an exceptionally long cast, just turn around, get your false cast going, and let it fly, and the back cast becomes your delivery cast. So your weapon against the wind is basically the tight loop. Okay, to review the wind cast, if the wind is coming into your face, you aim a tight loop low to fight the wind. If the wind comes from behind you, you reverse it and make your little back loop low and tight. If the wind's coming from your line hand side, it's just a matter of windage, you make a normal cast. If the wind's coming in on your casting side, if it's a light breeze, throw low and tight, side arm, stay under the wind. If the wind gets stronger, Circle your head, bring it all the way around, and drive it straight. If the wind's stronger yet, go to your backhanded casting, and in an extremely strong wind, turn around and use your shooting to the rear exercise to deliver the cast. Get your false cast going, let her go. The steeple cast is a cast that will allow you to throw your back cast over obstructions without tangling or fouling your loops. To make the steeple cast, you must aim your back loop up at a high angle. When you couple that with the straight direction of your front cast, you have a relationship that's less than 180 degrees. And if you remember from our loop control exercise, this is going to throw the closing or the tailing loop. So you want to be sure when you come forward on this cast, you don't throw a tight loop like I'm doing now, or the fly might come down and stick in your arm. So, just to show you the motions of the cast, you make the back cast, raising the hand as high as you can go, and at the peak of your lift, snap your wrist quickly to throw a tight loop high to the rear. But reverse that when you come forward, 
through a very wide, slow, lazy loop up front so it can't tangle. Tight to the rear, wide to the front. Okay, here's the way it looks on the water. High, low. Tight loop to the rear, wide one to the front. Lift that arm as high as you can, drop it back down to the water. To learn it properly, turn your head and make sure the back loop is tight and the front one is wide. Quick wrist there, wide loop there. Stop that thumb straight up. To get the distance you need in this cast, don't put the line in the air, learn to shoot it. As it's coming forward, get a nice little shoot, coil the line in your hand, raise the rod, drop it down, and you get a shoot. This cast, the steeple cast, is another shining example of how loop control can help you solve a stream presentation cast. Let's review the steeple cast. Keep your back cast as high as possible, throw a wide loop forward, and shoot as much line as you can. With the change of direction cast, you can present a fly where there's no room to make a back cast. In this situation where I'm backed up against the bank, I don't have room to make a back cast to present a dry fly out here in the middle of the river. So what I have to do is use the change of direction cast. Now here's how it works. First of all, I have to false cast perpendicular to my line of front cast. In other words, parallel to the bank. To deliver the final cast, I'm gonna take my arm and go way out, raise it, and drive the rod tip to the target. The key to this cast is knowing that the line goes where the rod tip goes. So on that last false cast, Use your arm for a long period of time. Go way out, raise it, and then drive it to the target, and you come right around the corner to present the fly. As with the steeple cast, the key to getting distance is the shoot. Don't put too much line in the air. Get your distance by making a shoot at the last second to go right out to the target. Great cast to know for changing direction when you're standing up against the bank like this. Here's the change of direction cast in slow motion. False cast parallel to the bank and drive your wrist to the target. Use this cast to deliver your fly when there's no room for a back cast. The double haul gives you more distance with less effort and is based on the principle that increased line speed increases the amount of energy. Now I'm going to show you how to double haul. I've stepped up here in the grass because this is really the best place to learn how to do it. First of all, I'll give you a demonstration of what double hauling does for you. It really increases the speed of your line. Without hauling, leaving my left hand off the line, there's the normal speed of my casting stroke. When I add the left hand, add that little pull, I think you can see that the speed just about doubles. And that's what makes the line go out. So I want to show you the motions to go through to learn hauling. Let me do it without the rod. It's a lot easier to learn just by simulating. <clears throat> With your casting hand, you're going to do the basic stroke, which is pull, snap, push, snap. With your line hand, just touch it to your, your casting hand and go through the basic stroke. When you snap the wrist to make the back cast, break the wrist with your left hand to make the line speed up. If you've done it properly, the line will jump to the rear and pull your hand back up and you have contact with your knuckles again. To do the front cast, come forward, break your wrist, let them catch up. They're apart, together, apart, together. Practice that for 15 minutes just with your hands, and that'll really be a shortcut to learning the double haul. Now, let's do it with the real rod and line. We start out doing it in a slow pace here. Notice how I pull at the second I break the wrist with a casting hand, right there, right there, and then I have to catch up. If you're still having trouble with it, lay it out on the grass and do half strokes. <clears throat> we'll do the single haul to the rear, bring your hand back, apart, together. 
Now, think about the one to the front. Come forward, apart, together. By letting them lay out there, you have time to think about what you're going to do. Apart, together, apart, together. Now, bring it up. When you get onto it, you get the, the speed right. Get that little pull with the left hand. You'll build up your line speed. And then that's the way you're going to let it go. Right now, we're just false casting. And this next one, we're going to pull it hard and let it shoot out. So work on your double haul. <clears throat> It'll tighten your loop, load your rod, let you get out there for more distance. It'll really help your fishing. Let's look at the double haul in slow motion. Snap both wrists at the same time. Apart, together, apart, together, apart, together, apart, together, apart, together, and pull quickly with the line hand and let her go. Use the double haul to get maximum distance with minimum effort. The squiggle cast is used to get a drag-free float on the far side of a strong tongue of current. Okay, now let me teach you how to learn the squiggle cast. The key to the squiggle is in the wrist. Like most of your other movements in casting, it's in the quick wrist, only we're only gonna move it in the horizontal direction, not in the vertical. We're not gonna move our arm at all. Now here's the way you learn to do squiggles. Make a straight line cast downstream. As soon as the cast hits the water, wiggle your rod tip out to the right and bring it back. That puts a mend under your rod tip. Let's do that again. Straight line cast, wiggle your rod and bring it back. You got a squiggle up near your rod tip. If you want to run it down further, you've got to squiggle quicker before the line hits the water. So if you want to put it about halfway down on the right side, throw, squiggle, stop. We ran it down about two more feet. If you want to run it down near the end, you squiggle even quicker, and we've got it almost on the end going to the right. If you want one halfway down on the left, wiggle your wrist the other way, and you got it halfway down on the left. The point is, this exercise teaches you how to use your wrist to paint any configuration out there in the water you need. And you add this technique to your curve cast technique, and you can really fish these tricky currents. Work on your squiggle. It's all in the wrist. Use the squiggle cast to cast across tongues of current. Slack line cast up there. Oh, there we go. We got one. We got one. One. Okay. Oh, jumping brown trout. Whoa. He's full of fire, but he's not very big. <laughs> oh. oh, guys, come on. Stay up here. Boy, he sucked that little Adam's up to hit the water. Oh, pretty fish. Nice spots on that brownie. Gee, money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All oh, right, got her out. Okay. All right, little guy. Go back and grow up, and we'll nail you next year. In this tape, I taught you how to refine basic straight line and slack line cast. And then I showed you the other important presentation cast, including the reach, the curve, and the reach curve. You also learn the roll cast, roll pickup, and the line manipulation techniques of stripping, feeding, and mending. Then I showed you how to piggyback these individual techniques so you can stand in one spot and fish any position in the stream. I also taught you the all-important specialty cast, Steeple, wind, squiggle, and change of direction. Plus, how to double haul for greater distance. Once you've mastered each of these presentation casts and techniques, you'll be able to fish the clock effectively in all of your favorite waters. You'll have transformed from a caster to a real fly fisherman. Then you'll be ready for my next tape Strategies for Selective Trout. Here, you'll learn how to combine the mental aspect of fly fishing, selecting the right fly and reading the water, 
with your newly acquired casting skills. This will give you the ultimate fly fishing approach. There's a stripe to remember. That's purple. That's not red. That's purple. Oh, what a stripe, my God. Go airborne. A little late for that, probably. Mm, hang in there, 4X. Come on now. Oh, yeah. You're going to wake up. Wrong side. Come on now. Back again. He wants to go home. My lord, what a strike. What a strike. <sighs> Heavy thing. Baby doll. Okay, we'll let you rest a minute. Come here. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, it's all that and a little 14 fly. Biggest fish I've caught today. excitement you're after, come fishing with the experts from 3M Scientific Anglers and learn ways to catch more and bigger trout on the fly. You'll learn where to find trout in a stream and ways to present the right fly with the perfect cast so you can catch the most elusive trout during hatch and non-hatch situations. Plus there's steelheading for 20 pound rainbows or going for the ultimate saltwater challenge. Let 3M Scientific Anglers bring home the excitement while you learn a lifetime of mastery techniques that will help you become the best fly fisherman you can be. There's no other sport like fly fishing. It can truly give you a lifetime of discovery and enjoyment. Whether you fish your own favorite stream or travel the world with your fly rod, there's no end to what you'll learn. To help speed you along your path of discovery, Scientific Anglers from 3M has recruited some of the world's best fly fishermen to produce a complete learning system of videotape programs. Unlike simple how-to videos, the Scientific Anglers Mastery Series shows you more than just tips. It gives you an easy-to-learn formula for success to truly help you become a master angler. There are programs designed to give you a strong foundation of knowledge and skill. At the next level, the mastery system helps you integrate the skills and knowledge into sophisticated fly fishing strategies. And for the expert, there are challenge level programs that offer original and innovative techniques to help you master the most difficult fly fishing situation. Think of it as a learning path towards fly fishing mastery. The tape you just viewed is part of that path. In Doug Swisher's Trout Series, Scientific Anglers presents a four-part program that features a natural learning progression. First, there's basic fly casting, where you learn loop control and the principles of throwing a perfect straight line cast. Then you move on to advanced fly casting, Building your skills with more complex casting techniques, including curve and reach casts. Now you're ready for action as Strategies for Selective Trout shows you how to fish a hatch from bottom to top. And you'll almost feel the strike as Doug demonstrates ways to take difficult trout in non-hatch conditions. Finally, in Advanced Strategies for Selective Trout, Doug teaches you his most sophisticated methods including ways to successfully fish the midge, how to unlock the mysteries of masking hatches and special streamer tactics to catch big trout. You'll be part of the action as you look through the eyes of the expert and learn the real whys behind the mastery of fly fishing for trout. While you're improving your streamside skills, 
You may also want to learn to tie your own flies. Gary Borger shows you a step-by-step -step approach to the basics of fly tying. And Doug Swisher demonstrates how to tie flies to match the hatch and his deadly attractor patterns. If you're hooked on catching the big ones, you've got to see the four-part series on fly fishing for Pacific Steelhead. Lonnie Waller and Jim Teeny will provide you with a complete arsenal of skills so that you can take these giant rainbows, even in the most challenging conditions. But that's not all. Scientific Anglers takes you south to watch world record holder Billy Pate demonstrate his secrets of success for hooking up and landing the ultimate fly fishing game. And if you love fishing, hunting, and other sports, think of 3M as your total video resource for outdoor adventure. Explosive action, in-depth information, incredible scenes. 3M Sportsman's Video Collection brings you the world of bass fishing with America's top anglers like Doug Hannon, Ricky Klein, and Al Linder, a comprehensive learning series that'll make you the best bass angler on your lake. You'll be glad you watch these programs when you catch the bass of a lifetime. The gentle beauty of a deep forest glade. The heart-pounding excitement of a trophy buck in rut. Going one-on-one -on -one with North America's most popular big game animal. That's what deer hunting's all about. And nobody brings you more in-depth information and true life action than the 3M Sportsman's Video Collection. The excitement of calling a bird into your gun. The satisfaction of making a clean shot. And the companionship of a well-trained dog. If you like the challenge of upland game bird and waterfowl hunting, 3M Sportsman's video collection gives you the thrill of being there. And the knowledge you need to master the sport. <laughs> 